Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We had a customer bring us this old pinball machine that he said belonged to his grandmother. I don't know if it still does or if uh, she owned it back in the day, but it's a, I believe it's an early 70s Gottlob Outer Space pinball machine. Oh, I forgot. I'm not allowed to say Gottlob anymore. A Gottlieb. Outer Space Pinball Machine. Uh, this is the two-player version. I think there's a four-player version of this as well. And I believe we actually had one of these many years ago, but this is not the same one. So uh, we're going to fix it up for him. So the first thing that we did was we went through, we cleaned up the play field. It cleaned up pretty good. Put all new rubbers on it and everything. But it doesn't work yet. So that's not fun. You kind of need it to work, right? So that's what we're going to do on this video with your help. So um, I figured I'd film a little video. So let's see what kind of condition it's in. We're not really going to do much cosmetic past what we've already done. So the cabinet itself has a lot of wear, but it's nice and solid. It's just worn. So I don't know how long they've had it or, uh, you know, where they kept it. But So it's got some paint loss, but it's, like I said, nice and solid. There's some surface rust on the front door. Uh, this side here is not much better. It's got a lot of uh, chipped off paint, but you know, it kind of adds to the to the uh, what's the word patina. It kind of adds to the patina, doesn't it, on this old Gottlieb uh, pinball machine? <laughs> I'm probably going to forget to pronounce it that way. So if I pronounce it Gottlieb, just feel free to roast me in the comments, like y'all usually do. Um, I'll open it up and we'll see what it looks like inside and then we'll uh, we'll see what it looks like inside the back box to see what we're starting with and uh, then we'll work through it from there okay I've got the brightness turned up a little bit so you can see in there decent uh, it's pretty clean inside it needs to be vacuumed out a little bit and stuff but I don't see anything majorly missing I do not like the looks of that what is that what's going on there I think it's just rusty metal, so I think we're all right. Um, don't like the looks of that that much either. And then, check this out. <laughs> so, one of the flippers is still wired up normal, but the other flipper... As in some extra accoutrements. <laughs> ah. It has extra accoutrements, people. So there is a speaker wire running down here, I guess, to a uh, subwoofer in the bottom. Let's see where this goes. Where is our speaker? They they have directly wired it to the right flipper switch. Now that ain't right, so we'll take that out and fix that up a little bit. But as you can see, there's not all that much in the bottom of this thing. So this is one of those ones. We're going to run right through, people. It won't be that big of a deal. So you ask, well, how do you know what to fix? Well, you do the same thing no matter what's going on. You just clean all of the switches, clean all of the Jones plugs, and then that will fix 95% of the bad stuff. If you find anything hacked up like that, you take the hack off, you know, document it so you can kind of tell what's going on. You take the hack off and then you test it after you've cleaned everything and see if it, uh, see if you're uh, still having a problem. So I'll, I'll roll this away from the uh, wall a little bit and we'll look in the back of it. All right, so I don't know if I've spoken much about my general good luck, but usually I'm a very lucky person. So there's no key for the back. So I start digging around inside the cabinet. The front door is not locked. So there's no lock on the front, right? So I start digging around inside the cabinet and down underneath the board there, I found this old key. Now, am I lucky enough that that's gonna fit the, the back door?
Well, what else would the key be in there for? Of course, that's the back door key, people. And look, would you look at this? After my, my good fortune in the back, I just found the schematics. Now, good Lord. Boy, we're killing it tonight. If you don't know, Gottlieb, to hell with the haters, Gottlieb, um, is owned by a private family who pronounces their name Gottlieb, I believe, but uh, I actually like all of the Gottlieb, so I've got a Spider-Man pinball here. I'm working on this outer space. We have a solar ride over there that we're working on. I mean, so I love them. They're, they're literally my favorite. Even though I can't properly pronunciate the name. Um, but since the family still owns the business, uh, they're very they're very particular about not they don't like having their schematics and stuff all over the internet. So because of that, and that's their kind of prerogative, and they own the rights to them still. Because of that, you can't get most of the schematics unless you buy them. But because I'm lucky, the schematics are inside of it. So very cool. Um, all right, so we're looking at the back. So here's what we're starting with. Now, the first thing you may notice is there's not as much junk in the back as there is in a lot of the other ones. If you watch this just finished that Bally Rogo, it was a little newer, but it was also a four player. So it had four sets of, uh, of uh, player reels, which makes all the difference, right? And uh, it had a little more scoring thing. So this, this one doesn't have anywhere near as much stuff inside of it, which means you can fix it a little quicker. You, you may have heard, uh, if, you're, if you're not into pinball, but you'd like to be, you may have noticed that a lot of people are really into the uh, wedge head, the Gottlieb wedge heads. And the, one of the reasons for that is because uh, uh, there's just nowhere near as much stuff in them. So they're, they're a little easier to fix, But because most of them are one player. So anyway, um, we're starting with a pretty clean little game on the inside. Another thing I've learned over the years, if you, if like, let's say you're just going to buy a game, right? If you find a game that's still got the back door on it, look what that does. Now, you see what the outside of this thing looks like. Here, I'll get close just so you know. <laughs> this is the kind of condition that this thing is in, right? So it has seen wear, right? But because that damn door was on there, look at the inside. You see the reflection of my arm on that, right? Look at that. You see the reflection of the camera on the back of those score reels? So my whole point is if you find one and it's still got the back door on it, usually that keeps mainly dust out of it. Now, rodents and stuff are still going to find their way in there, but you don't have an inch of dust on everything, and you also don't have all of these, uh, um, all of the wiring faded all to hell. Once that starts fading, it gets where it's really hard to tell the, the coloring apart on the wires, so it's just a lot harder to trace down problems on the schematics whenever you run into them. But we don't have that problem because this one had a back door on it, and it kept things nice and shiny, and that's how we like them. <laughs> so, uh, so that's what we're starting with. So the very first thing I'm going to do, we're not going to try to play it yet. I'm going to pop that play field out of it so that we can get down there into the bottom of the cabinet and I'm going to start uh, vacuuming it out. So I'm going to vacuum it out a little bit. Now I'm not the world's best cleaner. You may notice I say that about everything. Have you ever noticed that? I'm not the world's best anything except me, right? <laughs> I'm the world's best at being me. But um, I'll vacuum it up a little bit and we'll see what kind of uh, shape it looks like after that and then we will start cleaning switches. It's as simple as that. Okay, folks, we are deep in it, so I vacuumed it up a little bit. And I went through and I cleaned these relays. None of them looked like anything was really wrong, but they were filthy, uh, as you can tell from all the dust in the cabinet. So all the dust that wasn't in the back box was in the cabinet. <laughs> and so then I started doing the score motor here. And the score motor, I found three problems. Okay? I'm going to show you things you can look for on yours. So the first problem is, see at the top how this, uh, like this one, see how that big stack of switches has this, this 
bent blade on it. And the purpose of that is whenever the top spins around, these bars hit it, which is what makes those very top switches move, right? Well, if you look over here, the one on this one is broke. And so I've adjusted it where that thing hits it, but it never closes the switch like that. So when it spins around, it should hit, you know, push that open, you know, but that thing's missing. So we got to do something about that. There was a similar thing right here. See this? That's broke off. So originally there would have been a, a pretty much the same thing sticking inside of there. And the purpose of it is that's the actual break. So it kind of it kind of makes it where the thing slows down whenever it gets to uh, a, a certain spot. And the reason for it is so that it's easier for it to land in its home position and not like overshoot it. And then the other thing that I found was a lot easier. This switch right here wasn't connected very well. But I've got it now. So there were some switches. So what I'm, what I'm going to do real quick, uh, just for the video, is I'm going to see what the hell this switch is. So we're going to figure out what this switch does, and then that will tell us because that's there's no way that was hitting, so that will tell us what was what that was disabling on the game. All right, so there's this little diagram here, and it's kind of hard to figure out. But if you if you see that is actually the one that's uh, crooked on the wheel. See how the other ones are square to the wheel. That one's like laying over the wheel. It's number three, and it's position D, which is the top position. All it does is it opens the circuit to the 3,000 point lights. <laughs> so, so uh, I guess that wasn't really all that important. I'll see if I can see it on the schematics. Okay, hmm, we've got something wrong. See how it says motor 3D and then it says that it's normally closed. 3,000 point rollover lights. So I must have that wrong because that's not a normally closed switch, so... Saying it's maroon and orange. And then white and black. So maybe I'm looking at that wrong. Let me look again. Okay, I figured it out. Let me brighten you up a little bit again. Okay, so maroon and orange, white and black. So I was saying that that is a normally open switch that it closes as the bar goes by. But what's really going on is the home position must be like right there. So if that thing was long, it would be like that right now. Which means I gotta find one of those. I was just gonna bend it so it would hit it when it goes by, but it looks like it needs to hold it like that when it's in the home position. So we need a replacement one of those, and we need a replacement brake. And if you look on our list here, it actually does call the three and a half a brake. Oh, and by the way, here's how you know if it's switch position A, B, C, or D. So very cool. Okay, so there is this reset bank, I think it's called here, with a one, two, three, four, five, six. They may call it the relay bank. I don't know. But there are six relays here that are all reset by this big coil on the back. I've got it swung up out of its bracket. And so they are identified as, whoa, the last ball relay, the game over relay, the first ball in play relay, the reset control relay, the second player relay and the bonus value relay, okay? But the crazy thing about these is you just adjust them, and clean the switches. They have nice long switches that are easy to clean. And uh, there is a coil on the back that pulls each one in. So whenever it does, it drops it, which opens switches and closes other switches, right? Okay, and then whenever it gets to a certain point, this large coil pulls in and it resets all of them. But the craziest part is this one damn relay. So this is the reset control relay. 
So when you hit start, it has to reset everything back to where it is. It's this third one, right? So it's got a bunch of switches here. So this this um, this plate pulls in, which trips the relay. Okay. Now when it does, there is a damn switch underneath the thing that is attached to the plate. <laughs> right? So that thing is closed right now. The reason I can't show it to you perfectly is because it's really hard to freaking get to it any way you look at it. Okay, so it's closed right now, am I right? The camera can see it, but I can't see it. I believe that's closed. Okay, now watch what happens when I reset this damn thing. It's open now, right? <laughs> so you've got to get that thing, or was it open? Is it still open? Let me let me shine a little light on the subject. What do y'all think about my light skills here? I see contacts. Are those suckers closed? All right, so it's closed right now because it's tripped. I just reset it and it's open. Why in the hell would they do that? Right? So let's look at the schematics. So that thing is underneath that, that whole freaking underneath that whole freaking bank of relays. Okay, so this is the line side, right? So here's the power plug. Oh, I, I had another ass, uh, another uh, gentleman get on me because I said plug. So this is the power receptacle. The power receptacle, the line cord as it is... Uh, as it is described in the schematics, uh, you see the control bank here. That's that thing I'm talking about. And so it runs through a fuse. It gets its power straight from the line cord receptacle. Runs through a little switch. And then it runs through that small block armature uh, whenever the, the motor goes around. So the whole point is... You need that switch to reset the control bank. Without resetting the control bank, the whole thing won't start up. So, very important switch. So it's only closed whenever the reset control relay has tripped. You know, so the only way that that thing can reset is if the reset control relay has tripped. And so, if you don't have that adjusted right, uh, you'll never get anywhere. That won't, that won't work for you, people. Okay, so I looked in my parts stash, and I had a little armature. Look at that. And where I think is the home position, it is holding it closed. So I think that's right. And then I had a little something-something for the brake, too. I'll show you what the, the uh, broke ones look like. I, I also had somebody tell me that it's not broke. It's broken. So, earlier, when I plugged my Gottlieb in, it was broke. Um, this was the brake. It, it just snapped off. And then this was the one on the top. You saw how the end had popped off. So I think we're back together on that. Those damn things are $9 a piece. $9 a piece. So if anybody wants to uh, start a new market for that and, and make new ones... You could probably get eight dollars a piece out of them. Okay, folks, so the next thing that we have done is we have cleaned up the Jones plugs. So in all of these games, it's the same thing over and over again. So if you see one of these videos and you kind of just go in order, you can pretty much fix any electromechanical pinball machine. 
So we've got these Jones plugs nice and clean. Look at that. You can see on the inside, if you see the inside of the plugs where I didn't clean it, you can see just how bad they were. All right, so we got them nice and shiny again. Um, and then what I usually do is I run a uh, like a wire brush over the top of the actual female sockets. Ooh. And uh, so that's next. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to replace all of the light bulbs. Um, people have talked to us about putting LEDs in them and stuff. I just don't like LEDs. They're not my thing. But the original bulbs were 47, or number 44 bulbs. And so we put number 47 bulbs in them, which are, I think, 40%. Uh, they use 40% less power. And they're also a little bit less bright. So it... Uh, it gets rid of some of your heat, some of your power issues, just like an LED bulb does. They last a little bit longer, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we do do that, so that helps a little bit. But if it's your machine, you can put LEDs in it if you would like to. Um, but what I, what I typically do is while I go through the play field and replace the light bulbs, of course, I'm looking at everything. So I'm fiddling with this and seeing how the wires look here. And it's a good way of helping you make sure that you look at every little thing. So... Um, we always just replace all of the bulbs because some of them after a while they'll uh, first of all because they are the 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 ones that use more power and put off more heat but uh, also because since we're uh, we're just repairing this for a guy but we like being able to say that all the bulbs were replaced and they don't cost much at all so um, but if you if you don't need to do that uh, and it's an unknown machine you can just go around and look at everything without replacing the bulbs but so that's what I want to do next. I'm going to replace all the bulbs, and then I'm going to go through and start cleaning this stuff, our stepper unit here, you know, just working through it. So I'll let you know if I run into anything interesting, and we'll look at that weird flipper that they've got the wire hacked into. Look at this beautiful little device that I took off the bottom of the play field. These are used um, to do the match in the back box, and then on this machine what they've done is they have a little, you'll see later whenever we mess with it, but in the middle of the play field, there are some lights that go around the circle when you hit a spinner. So there's a bonus ladder at the bottom, and they've got a bonus unit to handle all that. But the lights, uh, when you hit the spinner, it just makes the lights go around. So they use this little uh, beautiful little uh, <laughs> relay to make that happen. You see these a lot in uh, Gottlieb's from this era. So... Uh, they have a little PCB board on one side with two little wipers on it. And then one on the other side that's set up the same way. And then there is a coil in the middle. And it pulls this little bad boy down. You see there's two switches at the top too. And a couple little cams that move those switches closed and open and all that. But the thing pulls in and pushes it to the next thing. Now, whenever you're testing these, we've taken it apart and cleaned it. Whenever you're testing these, you kind of need to do it violently because the machine does it violently. So whenever it pulls in, it's more like that. All right? So you just want to see if it snaps around. And you want to see if it's staying on the trace. You don't want it to touch two traces because then you get two lights on. And it should do that each time. So what it's doing is when you pull it in, there's a little spring that's pulling this little thing in, and it's pushing a little gear to spin it around. So you'll run into those from time to time. They're a little bit tricky. And like I said, it's used on the match unit in tons of games. And then, of course, it's plugged in with these little Jones plugs. So same old thing. you got to get them nice and clean. All right. On to the next thing. So we're working through the bottom of the play field. I have found three things of interest. First, that switch right there. Look at that crap. It's all been out of shape. I mean, I don't know what in the hell is going on here, but all of that clearly needs some help. This switch should be laying way up in here so that the ball lands on it when it lands an out hole. So that clearly you know it would never start with it like that okay and then another thing this bonus unit somebody has replaced 
that coil on the back and see there are little white wires that they put on there? They did that because these wires here weren't long enough, so they've electrical taped them together. But the reason that they're not long enough, I think, is because they've got the coil turned around backwards. If you just put it on with the lugs down here, like the original one would have been, these wires would fit right to it. So I, I'm, I might swap that around. <laughs> and then finally, the most egregious problem was clearly this speaker wire that they had added to it. So if you look, so over here's one that hasn't been modded, <laughs> right? So the way it works is there's an orange wire here that goes off the play field, through the Jones plugs, down the wiring harness, and over here to the left flipper. Right? That's how you power the solenoid on the flipper. So on this side, there at one point was this blue wire. So this would be original. Okay. And they have replaced it through considerable effort, because they had to solder it on and unsolder this one. They replaced it with a speaker wire that they had just kind of hanging off the play field. that went down here and went to the flipper switch. So they basically just short, you know, hot wired it. And here is the original wire. So you know what I did? I took my meter and I checked the continuity between here and here. And it's connected just fine. No problem. So what's different? So what fixed that problem? It's the damn Jones plugs, right? So it was running through a Jones plug down at the bottom that you can't see right now. And we cleaned it and uh, it, it must have been so filthy that it wasn't even making good connection anymore. But now it is as verified with a meter. So I can take that off and put the, the original wire back on it. I can bend that switch back the way it's supposed to be. And I can reverse this coil that's on this bonus unit and that'll get us back where we're supposed to be. So let me do that real quick. Alright, so I had to pull it out back out of the machine again because I had to get down to the bottom of this uh, unit. I was able to get it swapped around. They had some, they've replaced this coil so the wiring is really kind of screwed up there, but we got it good. Um, so we've got that fixed and then we, uh, we fixed the Wire for the coil is back on, the flipper is back on. And then the switch for the out hole. If you get one that's real bent up like that, one good way to do it is to just take the two screws loose, take the thing off where it's hanging. It makes it a lot easier to bend it straight and everything. So I got it bent straight and then screwed it back on. Everything's cool. But whenever I took the little wiper thing off, so it's obvious somebody's been messing with this. They've hacked up all of the little, the wire where it comes out of the coil, the lugs missing from here. So the wire has to be soldered to the actual wire and all that. But I was looking at this disc and trying to figure out, okay, am I sure that's in the right spot? Because if they took that off and spun it, it wouldn't be right. So I've been trying to figure it out. So I figured I'd show you how you can figure that out. So this is the bonus unit. It had a label on it that said that. And if you look all over the schematics, the only place that the bonus unit appears to even be used is for the light bulbs so um, I don't know how that works there are other, it's because there's a switch on the back of it never mind uh, so the bonus unit mainly the, di the, the disc part at least is just for the light bulbs so I'll show you how you can figure out where it's supposed to go see this, see this uh, line here connects to everything and you see it points to one little circle that's on the, the Bakelite disc with the rivets so it's saying at the first position, the home position, remember all of this is at like home position. So at the first position, this line connects to the first, re the first rivet and there's nothing there. And then when it moves to the next position, or I guess they might call that the zero position, when it moves to the next position, it's saying that it is connected to a rivet with a uh, maroon and yellow wire. The second position is a maroon and green. Third is maroon and white. 
Fourth is maroon. Right? Maroon and yellow, maroon and green, maroon and white, maroon. So if you look, they must be talking about these. And the first one is purple and yellow, and then purple and green, purple and white, and then like a, I don't know what that is. But it appears like we're on the right thing. So then the next one is yellow and black, and then uh, red, white, and blue. Go, go USA. Um, yellow and black, blue, white, and red. Okay. Yellow and black again, blue and black, white, white, and slate. Okay. Yellow and black again, blue and white, blah, 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 slate. Okay. So that's obviously what they're saying. So they're saying at the very first position, the, uh, the, the little contact should not be touching the first rivet. It should be before it, right? Or it should, to, to say it better, it shouldn't be touching this first wire, right? So if you set this thing all the way back to its home position, which is where I've got it right now, if you look down in there, the thing is not quite touching the first rivet. Let me brighten it up a little bit for you. So it's not quite touching the first rivet. So when I go in, now it is. So right now, this pin is touching this first wire, right? And then as you go on, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it only shows ten positions on the actual schematics. Now these will be too bright now because I've brightened it up, but it only shows ten positions on the actual schematics, right? But these bonuses, sometimes it lets go up even higher, so if you keep going with it, it lets you go another five points. But if you look, this is now on 10,000, and then down here on the back, you have spun around to the point where there are now two of these little things, and these are all connected together to this center thing. It's basically ground, right? Um, it is now to the point where the, t the, the 10,000 light must be lit up, right? So when you go one more, whoop. when you go one more, you are now on the 1,000 light, and then you're also on this little rivet on the back, the second row of rivets. And if you look, it's hard to see, but if you look on the back of the disc, this top wire, which is the 10,000 wire, also connects to all those rivets down in the middle. So as it spins around, it's got the, it's, it's lighting up the 10 and the 3, the 10 and the 4, the 10 and the 5. So I guess it can go up to 15,000 on the uh, on the bonus, and it won't go any higher. But as you can see, the way those line up, it all lines up where it makes sense. So that's how you tell if you have it on the right in the right spot. If it was spun, you would be starting where. This was starting on like the 7,000 light. Well, you know that's not right, you know. So you just got to mess with it and make sure that you get it where it makes sense and it's it looks like it's in the right direction. So I'm going to pop this back in and we're ready to work in the back box. Okay, so same thing. Clean the uh, uh, Jones plugs, put them back in. This little one here comes from the bottom. I took out this match unit, F, which is the... 0 to 90 uh, unit relay, which is the match unit, a lot of people call it. Uh, I cleaned these four relays here, which are like point relays and stuff. Um, I cleaned the switches on this uh, uh, replay unit. And I am now up to the very top. So we've got these eight score reels that we need to rebuild. And then we have this, I think they call this the player unit. So if you take this screw loose, uh, no, take this clip off. They put a keychain thing on it, which is fine. Take that off, though. And that should, if I can figure it out, it has a child safety protection lock on it, apparently. What the hell? All right, I figured it out. That'll fold down. So you have this, it's the same thing basically, but it's just a little more complicated. You have this coil here that turns, and as it does, it turns a bunch of little cams that make the switches jump up and down. 
So it's just the same thing. You have to clean all these switches. You have to uh, very carefully either remove this and clean uh, that plate or sometimes on ones like these you can just clean the rivets around it and leave the thing on so that you don't have to risk putting it back in the wrong place. Uh, but same thing. And then um, I'll show you uh, I'll show you one of the score reels so you can see what goes on with those on this on this particular era. Here's the inside of one of them. So basically, when it pulls in, you've got this little switch here, that, the end of stroke switch. You've got the switches here that um, open and close depending on what number it's on, just like most. You have this little gear here that helps the, uh, the coil turn the, the score reel. So what I've seen with these is this end of stroke switch will be broke. If that breaks, the game will still work, but you'll get, uh, sometimes you'll, some of your scores won't work right. So like if you're supposed to get 50 points, you'll only get 30 and stuff like that. It's because that end of stroke switch is broke on, and it can be broke on any of like, say like if it's the tens, it can be broke on uh, any, any of the 10 uh, motors. So like if the one on here is broke, whenever that one scores 30, 50, it might only score 30. And it's just, it has to do with the way that the, the design works. And then also this little blade here kind of gives tension so that the thing can't go backwards. Those get bent a lot. So you want them nice and straight like that, except for the very end. And it's the same thing. You just clean off the, look at all that. You just clean that off, get it nice and shiny looking, maybe put a little bit of lubricant on it and uh, carefully put it all back together. You don't want to put a bunch of oil. Sometimes I'll put oil like on the metal. So like right here, grease might be a better way to put it, right where that metal hits the other metal. And then down here, you have a situation where this is sliding on that metal. So I put a little bit of oil there sometimes. But uh, you don't really want oil all over the uh, nylon and all that. So. Go easy with it. Don't go crazy with it. So you just clean it up, put it all back together, make sure you clean your switches, and I'll show you what the, uh, the, the switches that ride it there are supposed to do whenever you've got it back together right. Okay, so I'm going to try to show you how this works. So these switches over here on the side, they ride around depending on what number is displayed. Because when it, it needs to know when it's at zero, and it needs to know when it's at 9. It doesn't necessarily need to know anything else. So right now it's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now here's 9. So when it gets to 9, it, this little bar pushes up and it connects the top one and the middle one and the bottom one is open. Now when I go to 0, it goes completely back the other way and it closes the bottom one on zero and then the middle one is open and the top one's open so when you go to one it goes back to how it was the top one is not closed the middle one is closed and the bottom one is open so the middle one it needs to uh, uh, run one two three four five six seven eight nine right and then whenever it one two three four five six seven eight whatever and then whenever it gets to nine it pushes up on this one and connects it and the reason that it does that is so that the next time that this one turns over, through that switch, it also sends a signal to the next score reel to make it turn over too. So that's how you go from 9 to 10. You go from 9 to 0 on this one, and then because that switch is closed at 9, uh, it also sends power over to the one that's on 0 or whatever next to it and push it, pulses it up one, so you get a 10 instead of a 9. And then the one at the bottom, the 0 one, it needs because it needs to know when all of the score reels have reset. All right, and that's just how these work. Now, on some of them, it works where uh, they just stay connected until it gets around to zero, and then whenever it gets around to zero, they open up. But it just they're wired different depending on the machine. So you just got to get them where they're all doing that. So I've done two. I got six left. Okay, people, so I finished up with the score mode, the score reels, and like I always do, I left them on one so that whenever it resets, we can see if they all reset. I have no clue what this thing is going to do. I haven't plugged it in yet or anything. I don't even know if the power is on on it. So it might start resetting as soon as we plug it in. Nope, it's turned off. Okay, 
So I'm gonna hit the power switch and see what we get. Oh, wait a minute, it might be on. Nope. Do not be alarmed. Do not be alarmed. Sounds like it's trying to reset the bonus unit to me. There we go. Sounded crazy, didn't it? It was trying to get the bonus unit back to zero, I believe. Okay, so the game over light is on, the tilt light is on. That back glass doesn't look that bad. That bad. I haven't replaced the light bulbs behind the back glass yet, so some of that's still going to be a little off. Okay, so I'm just going to try to start a game. We're going to see if it resets and if it'll kick the ball out. We don't have any play field lights yet. I don't know if that's right or not. Let's see if we can get her to do anything. Boy, I like the sounds of that, but it didn't kick the ball out. But hey. Hmm. Did not kick the ball out. We're on player one. It says ball and play number one. Remember we were, we had some uh, ball kicker issues. Ball. Didn't. <laughs> kick out. Okay, why would that be, you think? Let's see if I can... Maybe it's not on the switch properly. It seems as if it's on it. I'll kick it out my myself. Okay, so let's see if anything will score or if we got a bigger problem. That didn't work. Okay, the thousand worked. Uh, Get us a hundred. All right, I think the hundred point relay is locked on because the uh... <laughs> all right. Okay, so the hundred points isn't scoring. Okay, so whenever you score a score, so like you get 100 points, what happens is the 100-point relay pulls in and tells the, the reel to turn over to 100 points. If the, whenever the reel turns over to 100 points, it opens that end of stroke switch I was talking about, which kills the power to the 100-point uh, uh, relay because it lets it know, okay, it went ahead and scored 100 points. And the reason that they put that in is so that, like I was talking about, if you, uh, if you score like 500 points... It needs to pulse five times, and it uh, it holds the relay in long enough. Well, it's even if you score 100 points. It Basically, the relay has to hold in long enough to make sure that the reel turns all the way around, that that plunger pulls all the way in. And so they have that set up like that where when it pulls all the way in, it opens a switch, that end of stroke switch we were looking at, and it kills the relay. So whenever I just uh, scored uh, 500 points, it all turned around or whatever, but it uh, it never gave me a hundred points. So why didn't the why didn't the um, reel turn over? Well, it's either a bad misadjusted or dirty switch on the hundred point relay, or it's on that score reel the uh, the little switches that it rides on the edges uh, that we were looking at. The one that sends it power uh, whenever it's in the zero position or whatever doesn't work. So. Uh, We'll have to look at that. That's why I wrote it down. Okay, but it looks like the thousand point one is working. So this says advanced bonus and one thousand points. So it gave me a thousand points and it advanced the bonus. Our seven light is out. Now remember how on our little bonus wheel we were saying that it looks like you can go up to 15? So it stopped at 15. So that's right. 7,000 light. Okay. Uh, 3,000 points when lit. Okay. So that didn't roll over. 
10,000 doesn't roll over. Mm. We're getting some little issues here, people. Uh, but it did score 3,000 points. So that's good. I'm trying not to hit anything that's a uh, 100, because I don't think the 100s are working. Uh, where's our little... This may give us 10. Hmm. That's not carrying over either. 100. Didn't roll. Oh, you know why? So why didn't it score 100? It's because my 100 screwed up. Remember? So yeah, like I said, the 100 relay is pulled in right now. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the score motor out and I'm manually, I'm in the score reel out, and I'm manually turning it over 100 and that's turning off the 100 relay because it's breaking the end of stroke switch. So we need to still look at that. Okay, uh, what else can we do? Oh, let's see if our very target works because it's suspect too, people. That didn't seem right. So it's not the little, the spring is not letting it go back forward. But I should have got more points than that. I only got a thousand points. Still only got a thousand. There's a little spring that it lets go and it won't go back. All right, so that too. Very target. Doesn't score. Very target. Doesn't reset. All right, uh, the hundreds are screwed, so that's not working right. So the hundreds and the five hundreds are a bunch of stuff on the play field. None of that is working right. Okay, so we're going to drain the ball and see if we get our bonus. So it looks like I should get 15,000. We're at 5,000. Oh. oh, the damn ball eject coil is stuck again. Also screwed up. Eject mech jams. So basically the thing that pops it up through the play field, it's stuck up. It was doing that earlier too. All right, so we got some major issues. The first one I want to fix is the 100 point thing because uh, I can't test the rest of the scoring without that. So let's see what the hell's going on there. Okay, so that is nearly an hour of repair work on this thing so far. We're getting there, but we didn't quite get there. So join us next time when we will see if we can fix all of that stuff we found, plus other stuff that we didn't even find yet. I'll bet we will. Now, how would I know that? <laughs> if I filmed any of this video out of order or edited it together out of order, I would already know whether or not we were able to film the stuff, fix the stuff. So that could be what happened. I could have already fixed it, and I'm sitting here with a fully functioning game, um, but I haven't uploaded the video yet, and I'm filming this afterwards to break the video in half. That could be what's going on. Uh, but next time we will see if we can fix all of those little problems that we wrote down, uh, like chicken scratch, on that little piece of paper. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Um, we'll see if we can get this thing going next time. Now, if you want to see the game, we're fixing this for a customer, but if you want to see the games that we have available for sale, go check them out on our website. You can go to lionsarcade.com. Check it out. It's always up to date. If you're local, you can come by and see us. We are in downtown, Char uh, downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina, which is about 15 miles south of Charlotte, North Carolina, which you may be more familiar with. But we are in downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina, just over the South Carolina, North Carolina border. And we've got a showroom here full of arcade games, pinball machines and stuff. We're always working on something. We also sell old vintage video games and things like that. Keeps us fairly busy. Um, 
Now, if you're not local, so you can't come by, and you don't want to buy one because the shipping would kill you, we understand. Just subscribe to us here on YouTube, and every time we film another cool video, it will let you know about it, hopefully. And make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film this for you. We've also been mentioning our Amazon thing lately. Down below all of our videos, there is a little link to some product or another on Amazon. Uh, on this one, you know, we might link to our favorite wax that we use for the pen, for the play field or something like that. Now, if you go to that link on Amazon, even if you don't buy the product, if you buy anything on Amazon, anything, so in the middle of the shutdown, you might want to buy cases of toilet paper. Now, if you're watching this two or three years from when I uploaded it, you may have forgotten what that was all about. Hopefully you have. <laughs> so if you want to go buy something that people are hoarding, or you want to go buy uh, some bubble gum, or a, uh, uh, an electric uh, Tesla, they may sell them on there, anything you buy on Amazon after following our link, gives us a small royalty for sending you there. It's like the way they do their advertising. We are an Amazon associate, so that's pretty cool. And it doesn't cost you anything, uh, which is why we like it very, very much. People have asked us if we're going to do Patreon. We are not going to do Patreon because uh, we don't want you to send your money to us. People, hang on to your money. Uh, if other people want to do Patreon, that's fine, though. I don't, I don't hold it against anybody. It's just I don't think it's right for us. But if you do want to go to Amazon and buy something, that doesn't cost you anything. And it gives us a little bit of money, so we appreciate it. A lot of people have been doing that. Thank you. We, the reason I mentioned the toilet paper is because somebody actually did that the other day. They bought a big old huge case of toilet paper and we got a royalty for it. It doesn't say who did what or what anything, so I don't know. That could have just been people sending us a message that our videos are crap. But probably not. They were probably just being nice. So uh, if you do that, we appreciate it. We'd like to shout out all of our people from all over the world that are watching our videos. And uh, some people from many of the states here in the United States. Uh, uh, someone earlier was mentioning they're watching from Louisiana. Thank you for watching in Louisiana. Someone mentioned the other day they were watching from Norway. Thank you, Norway. Uh, and we have a uh, uh, someone that has been watching from Japan. Thank you, Japan. So uh, leave your comments below. Let us know where you're watching from because that's kind of neat. Uh, make sure to give us that thumbs up because that if if you get, the reason we ask you to give us a thumbs up is because if the video gets a lot of thumbs ups or thumbs down, don't tell the haters. That's that's funny. We'll, we'll talk about that for a second. But if the video gets a lot of thumbs up or thumbs down, YouTube says, oh, people are uh, reacting to this video. Let's share it around. So they see the haters think whenever they thumbs down a video that it hurts. It doesn't hurt. It just makes the video go farther. So give us a thumbs up, though, because, you know, we like to be positive. But, you know, if you're a hater, go ahead and thumbs us down. That'll help us out, too. Um, and uh, <laughs> we, will, uh, we will see you on the next video. We appreciate you spending nearly an hour with us. On the next one, uh, we'll see if we can get this thing up and running.